Hey hoodies, welcome back to my channel and thank you so much for clicking on this video. Today we're going to be doing critical sass, a classic critical sass. It's not live. I've been doing these lives exclusively this year, so it's nice to be back on a pre-recorded session. They're really annoying to edit, but I can't do my critical sass live this month, so we're just gonna have to do it the old-fashioned way. But if you happen to be new to my channel, critical sass is whenever I look at new makeup releases and I discuss whether or not I think they are good releases or bad releases, or if I'm indifferent to them, or if I think I might pick them up. But my channel is really about loving my makeup collection as it is first and foremost, while being critical about new makeup releases and being very discerning about what I do decide to even try in the makeup world. I do also do reviews. The reviews are solely supposed to be informational, not to be like, you need this product right now. It's just like, if you happen to have been interested in it, here's the information about it. So if that kind of content sounds good to you. I would love to have you subscribe. Make sure you like this video. It really helps me in the algorithm. And I'm also on patreon.com if you'd like to support me there, but there's no pressure. I'm just so happy that you're here. And uh, I also have merch, which is down below. Again, kind of same deal. Do it, don't whatever suits you. So it has been a month since I looked at new releases. I am coming in really cold here. So these are hot takes. I don't know anything more about them than what I know and what I read in the posts. I'll be using makeup accounts such as Trend Mood 1, Trendstopia, which I, knew, which I think is now called Point and Click, and Makeup on My Radar. I'll link them down below. They, I'll be using their imagery and I will be resourcing my information from them. What they do is not simple and what they do is very helpful to people like me and you who are very interested in makeup. So just remember to support those accounts that make videos like this happen because I know these are very popular video style. I know I'm not the only one who does these. I'm just, you know, I just call it critical sass. I'm gonna scroll to like where I think I left off last time, but I'm not like 100% where I where I may have stopped. First thing that has, I, don't, I think it's probably released now, but the Luminous Silk Liquid Glow Bronzer Drops. Now I'm going to post the picture of the arm swatches, which there's a couple of things I like about it. And then one thing I'm really confused about. So on the first arm, the lightest arm, they swatch all three shades. As it goes onto the deeper models, the shades that are too light get dropped off. But then if you look at the third model, the model with the deepest skin, the arm with the deepest skin, that shade is lighter than that model's skin tone. So I think we might have a problem if we're calling this a bronzer for that type of skin tone. Now, maybe it will just add warmth. Maybe it will still do something. Obviously, I don't have this formula and I also don't have deep skin, but I'll be curious to see how that plays out. Everything about this sounds lovely. I've never tried a liquid bronzer. I know that Cover FX had one back in the day that Samantha Ravendahl really liked, but I never tried that. And then it kind of, I think Samantha Ravendahl kind of distanced herself from it because they brought them back, but they didn't bring them back in enough shades. And Samantha was like, no, no. I'd be interested in trying this. I don't think this is something that I would like buy with my budget to review. Like I, I have enough bronzing product, but the reason I think I'm interested in it is like, I've always kind of had an aversion to liquid products, but recently Surratt sent me some of their liquid blushes and I really like the formula. So I'm wondering if I would like this, although this isn't a dropper and while I don't really love the mechanism that Surratt puts their liquid blushes in, I'm not sure that I would like this any better. I guess I would have to dispense it onto like a mixing palette and then go from there. It does look beautiful. But I would love, it's something that I would enjoy trying, but it's not something that I would pay for. Armani typically does a pretty good job with like releasing minis. So maybe these will have a mini and I think a mini would be a much better purchasing option for most people unless you love bronzer. But I don't love bronzer so much that I need like a full one of these. So Fenty, this is a little bit of old news, but Fenty was released a matchsticks lip and cheek and lip and strawberry pop that gives you a rosy shade that reacts to your skin natural chemistry. Very few brands have managed to do this pH reacting thing in a way that feels mature. And I understand as I'm not like the oldest person, but Fenty's not a brand exclusively being sold to Gen Z. In fact, I would say that if anything, Fenty should be following millennials where they're at because I don't know that younger people are going to really care about the journey of Fenty. Not going to be as invested because we have a relationship with Rihanna. The people like our age and older have like a relationship with Rihanna that maybe younger people don't have. They might like Rihanna. They might like think fondly of Rihanna, but like, you know, there was a lot of people our age in it. So like we're attached to this Fenty brand and the Fenty brand years ago introduced this like whole possibility of ranges. But I feel like they keep releasing things like designed to be TikTok trendy. And I just, I don't think that's what they should be doing. I just make beautiful product. These pH 
adjusting things. We all know that just means that you're going to have a hot pink, whatever. It doesn't matter. I know there's only one shade of this, but it's hot pink. <laughs> Surprise, it's hot pink. Now, maybe on a deeper complexion, which I'm not really sure I've ever seen someone with a deeper complexion use a product like this. Maybe they get more out of it. Maybe they might get more out of it than me with someone who's like pretty fair skin. I don't care about this. I don't want this. I don't think... Have you tried it? Have you ever liked a pH adjusting thing? And if you have, then maybe this is for you. But if you have it, which I bet most of you don't like the way that those look on you, then just a pass. Now, to be fair, I have seen it done well, and we'll come back to it. Like there's a product coming up later. I might have the pH. I don't actually know it for sure, but like we'll talk about it then. There are brands that have done this idea well, but I just think I'm I'm fine with like we're going into spring, summer. We want, I mean, look at, look at, I mean, every, everything, I'm like wearing a neon yellow shirt. I have a bright red lip on. I have a fiery orange eye on. So like, I'm ready for these kinds of pops of colors. Like I'm here, I'm here, but I don't think this is how I want to do it. Also, like I do kind of like this limited edition packaging for the, like the stick, but also it's just like, I feel like it's too little too late on those, those sticks. But I, it, some of you have said that you like the match sticks. Uh, couldn't be me. Not for me. And I'm not saying that you shouldn't love them. And you should. If you do love them, you should love them. But like, it's not a product for me. My, I have a hoop earring on. My nails are longer than they've been in quite some time. I have the energy that I did six years ago in my body right now because of all of this. Because it's just who I am and my nature. I feel like this is something that me and only me I'm interested in this. But Cicely released a lighter version, a lighter shade version of their Luminous Powder. Now my friend Brittany, aka Born Blushing on this platform, says that she likes this powder for blurring better than my beloved Chantecai Perfect Blur Powder. But I have heard from some of you after I have mentioned that this is a product I'm wanting to try, that this leaves a cast. Now Brittany has a deeper complexion than me. She has, I think, maybe more of like a medium light medium complexion. So I don't think it shows up on her. But a lot of my fair skinned friends here have been like, just so you know. So I, I was probably, I wanted to try it after I was done with my Chantecai Perfect Blur Powder. I was worried about the cast, but now there's one that's maybe even it does leave a cast, it's gonna work better for me. So I'm now, I'm very invested in the future career of this. I'm very much, I wanna know. I wanna know if it works just as, I mean, I'm sure it works just as well, but you know, if you're going through all of that to formulate a new shade, maybe more than one, I don't know. A lot of my contemporaries, my peers on this platform are very excited about this. Makeup by Mario is sneak peek, potentially a cream blush, but it looks like it's gonna be a similar formula to the Skin Enhancer, which I have not personally tried. I have enough cream bronzer to last, a well, actually I just, I'm down to one cream bronzer. Now that does not mean that I need to immediately replace my second cream bronzer, but the Makeup by Mario Skin Enhancer is like on my to try list because I think I would really enjoy it, but does seem to be a polar, more of a polarizing product, but I think more people that I typically align with liking things have liked it. So like, it's like on my, it's like on my to try list. It's like on my thing, my to do list. If this is a blush in that, I think people are gonna be very happy with it. I figured out why I've never tried Makeup by Mario. I have like a pretty big aversion to the brand. It has, it's not Makeup by Mario's fault at all. Every time I go into a Sephora, because of the white packaging of Makeup by Mario and people just opening and closing, it just like, they look so gross. Those, they always look so gross. The, all of the display product looks so gross. It's like big yikes. And I, but so the, I, every time I go, I look at this soft skin enhancer and I go, ooh, that's gross. But I don't actually think that it's gross. I just think that in Sephora, it just kind of looks gross <laughs> because of all the people had their fingers in it. But sure, I think that I would, I would try this at least. Like I, I would, but I don't know that I'm going to be as excited about it because I didn't try the soft sculpt enhancer. So, um, but I'm curious if it will actually be a, blush because whenever the soft sculpt enhancer came out I remember thinking that it was much gonna be more akin to the the balm that Danessa Marie Danessa Myricks released around the same time I don't Danessa Mariah Danessa Mariah okay I don't know what Danessa Myricks middle name is but it's now Mariah that is canon I will not hear otherwise and I would not like feedback on it thank you very much Cleona released this is, I think this is already out. The Deep Sea Treasures palette, eight new shades with hues of deep sea and bright accents and varying multi-chromatic finishes. $93.50 USD. I 
think it's ugly. Let's talk. Let's talk. So I, I have some Cleona shadows. I have many Cleona shadows, and I have I like I like them quite a bit. There's I love them. I, I like the way they look. I like I like playing with them. I have so many of them. The way they palette, the way that the brand makes palettes, it's not it. So they released that like juicy. I don't know, but it was like pink. I keep thinking watermelon. I don't think it was actually like a watermelon collection, but in my brain, it was a watermelon collection. They released that last year. I'll put a photo of that up here. And I thought, oh, that looks like something that I can make. And there's no mats. And I have no problem buying like a bundle of multi-chrome eyeshadows that I can then build my own palettes with. I, I think that's what I would do if I were interested in this. If you are interested in this, I highly recommend taking that into consideration because it looks like they were removable. Like you can pop them out. What Cleona does is like, it's just like, it looks not special when they like put, put make the this pan square. So I, I have, I don't actually know a lot about it, but I remember them doing a palette that people really liked a few years ago. And I believe it had circular pans and it had some mounts in it. And it felt like a, I think people were really excited about it because it was like kind of a vision seen all the way through. This has like no vision other than like, see, show me a look. Sh only using those shadows together. And it can be done. And I am not opposed to an all shimmer look. But I just think that your vision can't be that. Like, tell me how you want how, what how do you see the sea? Give me some mats, give me some interesting mats. And I think I would really love to see Cleona, like, be really thoughtful and put color stories together because they do such beautiful shades. Like I, even if they took shades they already make in mattes and shimmers and multichromes and just like put them in a palette, but like maybe in the circular pans just to make it so it's like it's you can tell it was part of one of their eyeshadow palettes. I just this isn't giving me what I need. I would pass on it if I, I, I wouldn't. I'm like not even like the least bit interested in it. It's really hard to get me with a new multi-chrome shade because the secret is that a lot of the multi-chromes kind of look the same on your eye. Because I have so many like green multi-chromes and on the eye, most of it, it's undetectable about which one it is. I'm not hype on the Cleona palette, but if you are, I understand. <laughs> Guess what? Bare Minerals heard the cries of the people and said, you want more blondes or shades? Let me give you only two. <laughs> thank you, Bare Minerals. Well, first of all, Bare Minerals, thank you so much for listening and making more. They have Kiss of Mauve and also Kiss of Spice. Can you tell which one I'm more excited by? Because I know you can, because I have been tagged in the, I have been tagged and then also Kiss of, it's me, my name tagged and then Kiss of Spice. It just doesn't say anything more than that. It's just like they, everyone needed me to know that this was coming. And you're right, I want that. I want that. I actually have a couple problems. First of all, Kiss of Spice, singing my name. Ugh, singing my name. It's beautiful, it's gorgeous, stunning. It's everything I've ever wanted in a bronzer, and I didn't even know that I wanted it in a bronzer because I already thought they made the perfect bronzer with me when they made Kiss of Copper, but then I tried Kiss of Pink. Kiss of Pink is really good. The mauve one. How different is it going to be from the other two, like, pink-leaning ones? I don't know. I don't have it. And I'm not going to have it because if there's any blush shade I do not have interest in buying, it's a mauve. It's a mauve. I love a bright, cool pink. We've learned this about me now. And a year ago, I wouldn't have admitted that. But I will admit it now. But this Kiss of Spice, call me the gingerbread person. Do not call me that. Because I want to, I did see on State of Kate's story, she had po reposted another creator's swatch of it and it was pretty deep. And I was like, I would probably do more of a bronzer placement with it as opposed to a blush placement with it. Anyway, it's really gorgeous and stunning. And if it ever comes my way, I'll be more than thrilled to try it. Here's why I'm not going to buy it. And this is more of a personal thing. I have a lot of makeup. I am testing a lot of makeup right now. So I don't want to add another thing to what I'm testing. And while I'm testing new things, I still want to love up on my other things that I've had for some time. I don't know that a bronzer is really going to find itself in the mix unless it's something that I already own. And I have Kiss of Pink, which a subscriber was kind enough to send me. And I have Kiss of Copper, which I purchased and I really love. And in the summertime, I really love Kiss of Copper. So that's why I wouldn't buy this. But here's what I also will offer up if you are a bronzer lover, because I know it's a very popular product. A lot of people really like it. People really dig it. What I'm going to say to you is that if you 
bought the bronzer formula and the color is perfect for you. Why risk it for the biscuit to see if one of these colors you would like more? I find eight times out of 10, if I buy more than one shade in a specific formula that I like, that I don't really care about any of the ones but the ones that I love the most. So I think if you liked the bronzer formula, but the three colors they initially released didn't work for you and you tried them, but you were like, I really wish they made a shade, and perhaps one of these shades is more appealing to you, then perhaps that might be a good purchase for you. But from where I'm at, like Kiss of Copper is really it. And I'm, I was, you know, I'm blessed enough that someone sent me theirs free of charge for Kiss of Pink. And I really like Kiss of Pink. It's a beautiful blush. But I, I would be, I would have just been happy owning Kiss of Copper. And so would Spice really fill a gap? No, it's just like now I have three of this formula that I really like. But you know what's going to happen is I'm just going to keep using the one I like the most. And it's probably going to be Kiss of Copper. Lunar Beauty is releasing some lipsticks and lip liners. So eight lipstick shades coming out $20 each and then eight lip liners $14 each. Honestly, I don't know what the packaging feels like, but that's cute packaging. I can appreciate custom packaging. I know it's not cheap for brands to do that. And especially with Manny running like an independent brand, I, I have a lot of respect that he did not just go with um, a simple component, which he really hasn't done from the start. He's especially with the highlighter component, like it was like something that felt very thoughtful that he, even if it was a component that already existed, it's like he it, it was whenever we think of that packaging, we think of Lunar Beauty and then we also then think of Makeup Revolution stealing the packaging from Lunar Beauty. But I haven't tried anything on Lunar Beauty. I feel like all of these duos feel like something that I would expect Manny to put out. And I don't think that's necessarily a bad thing. They're pretty and I, I would try them. Kind of like with everything, I have a lot of lipsticks and a lot of beautiful lipsticks. And you know, I know exactly which shades I would buy if I bought this. And you know why I would buy the shades that I would buy if I bought them from this brand? It'd be because I already have lipsticks and formulas that I already know that I like that exist in my makeup drawer. So what value would me buying the new Lunar Beauty lipstick be other than to test the formula? I would say it's probably going to be nice because I've not really actually heard a lot of quality issues with what Manny makes. Like I, I, a lot of people seem to really like what he does. So I'm gonna guess that they're probably gonna be pretty good. Honestly, I, I, I think it's I think it's a smart. It's like a natural extension of the brand, in my opinion. So for Lunar Beauty, excellent release. Good job for you as a consumer. Probably don't need it. Unless you're looking for a lipstick shade that you don't already have that Manny is making. I'm a creature of habit. When I buy a new formula, I want to buy it in a shade that I know I'm going to love. So I'm always buying dark brown lipsticks. Now, there are nuances to all the deep brown lipsticks I own, but do I need all of the deep brown lipsticks that I already own? No. Unfortunately, I won't be buying one of these and perhaps maybe that train of thought will help you make a better consumer decision. Gucci released three new shades of their blush I don't like. So if you like it, Sure. These ones are definitely more satch. Okay, let me let me actually talk about it. So Gucci, okay, what are the, the Luminous Matte Beauty Blush. So there's three new shades, Soft Red, True Pink, Intense Plum. The original launch of these blushes, all of the shades were like pretty desaturated. I imagine that these two shades on the left, so the Soft Red and Intense Plum shades are gonna look way better on deeper complexions than the original launches, which were all pretty light. There was like one shade that was like, that people who had lighter skin said like not, can't use that one. And interestingly enough, Gucci is one of the higher end brands that seems to do better in its shade ranges than other luxury brands. I don't need, I don't like this formula. I thought it was like a fine formula, but it was like not something that I would like recommend for you to buy. I think these are $50, $49. I don't even think the packaging is that satisfying. I remain confused as to why the back of the packaging has a hole as if I could pop out the blush, but the blush is, the pan is glued in. So speaking of me being more into like more receptive to liquid blushes, Urban Decay is releasing their Hydromaniac Dewy Liquid Blush. Sure, cute, whatever. On the swatches, they look so intensely pigmented. And then when you look at 
it on the models. It's like not as pigmented. The, I didn't try the Hydromaniac. I think it was a Hydromaniac, like their tinted moisturizer. But I kind of heard that that was like leaned almost too dewy for most people. So I'm wondering how dewy these might be. And I'm wondering how close they might be to the M Cosmetics Serum blushes. Maybe they could be an alternative to that. I really like the Surat ones. And I don't feel like... I, in fact, there's one Surat one I'm gonna probably let go of because I just don't like the shade as much as the other shades that I got from Surat. So I'm gonna pass that on to someone who probably will like it a lot more than me. So I don't need to get rid of that and then replace it immediately. The only liquid blush I have my eye on that's not, that I is not Surat is the NARS one. And you know what? Khaki is gonna do the, the heavy lifting for me on that one. She bought all the shades. So I'm just gonna be like, is it good enough to buy? This is a release that everyone's really excited about. It, I, it's like, we're in blush season. We're, in bl we're going into the summer. Everyone wants something cute on their cheek. The blushes are coming. Tack of the blush. Spring, summer, 2023. Every summer, every year. So Dior is releasing more of the backstage rosy glow blushes. I have one. Just so you know, it's not going to look like whatever's on. It's going to look different because the inside, it's a scam. I like the blush. I understand why people are very excited about it. It's a nice blush. It is a nice blush. It's not giving Dior, but I know this is the Dior backstage. I don't care. All that to be said, there are four new shades. This is, I think, who knows? I know that this one and also the other, like the pink one, have the pH adjuster in them. So while this is coral, it does pull more pink on me, but it's not like pulling hot pink. So it, there must be a little enough in this that it actually adapts more to the actual pigment of the blush. Whereas a lot of the pH adjusting things just all look the same. They always just like turn a hot pink. I'm curious if these shades have the pH adjuster in them because there are some deeper shades in here and there's like a dusty rose color which I always think that I'm going to like and I'm like attracted to that and there's also a mahogany one which is brown which is almost certainly not made for my skin tone but I would try that one above all the other ones. So I think this is a really smart release from Dior. They were like these are really popular let's expand on it and it's I think it's working. There's a lot of interest in this from not only my subscribers but people I follow on Instagram and everyone I follow is very excited about these. So I'm excited to see what happens with the new shades. I wouldn't buy any of them and if you kind of like with the blondes if you were satisfied with the coral or the pink one then you do not need any of these new shades. Unlike, they're very unlikely to bring anything to you that your favorite shade that you already have can't. It's almost June. It's almost June. So Corporate Pride is uh, coming for us. So Danessa Myricks is releasing the Bi Pride Infinite Chrome Flakes. This year, more than ever, I'm going to be upset about this and I'm going to have a lot more to say. And I'm not... What I'm about to say, I need anyone who might be bisexual to just hold on a second. If you're gonna do pride collections, I need to, I need to see, I, I, I got, you gotta do more than buy pride. Trans people are under attack right now and we are soon to follow the rest of the LGBTQ community. So your little infinite chrome flakes as a show of solidarity and support, I like don't fucking care. What are you doing, Danessa Myricks brand? I'm not coming for Danessa Myricks the person, but what are you doing as a brand to ensure that trans people are, are gonna be safe? Because I don't really care. Like, I don't really care that you're like, we made buy the bisexual colored chrome flakes like I could put blue and pink lighting behind me and be like it's my bi pride era like I don't give a flying f I don't want to see any goddamn rainbows I don't want to see any goddamn bi pride I if I want to see money helping trans people I want to see I want to see receipts of you not supporting people who are hurting trans people if you're gonna bother to do this, if you're gonna fucking bother, it's it's not that you're a bi pride. Sorry. I know that Danessa has done, like, she, she did, it, so coming back down to earth a little bit, she did like a rainbow one last year and I think she donated either all of the proceeds or a portion of the proceeds to some kind of charity, which is absolutely fine. They're not saying anything about donating money in the trend mood post. I would hope that they are 
because I will be very upset if that none, nothing is happening. Where is Danessa Marek's headquartered? What are you doing in your community? Where your where your factories are? Like, what are you doing where you have an impact? I'm very flustered about this, and I don't norm like I don't always see corporate pride as like villainous, but this year it's in. It it's like shut up, don't do it, don't do it. If you have a history or if it can sneak up on you that you are in fact not an ally. I don't care. Literally, last year, it's like annoying to me. Corporate pride is annoying to me. And I do think for people who live in rural areas, sometimes corporate pride is all they get. And I don't want to like take that away from people. But like this year, it's not the time to fuck around. Like I don't have it to do. People are literally under attack right now. It's not time for like shiny makeup rainbow. No, literally no. Chanel Le Beige Healthy Glow Cream in Rosy Beige. A cream gel that evens out and illuminates the complexion with a subtly rosy veil. With a lightweight formula that is easy to... Okay, so I have one of the Healthy Glow bronzers. I like that formula. That's bait. That's me. That's the color of me. I don't know what to do with that. I don't see, like, sh sh a luminosity coming from it. I don't... I'm, I'm sure it's not matte because the Healthy Glow bronzing cream does have, like, a glow to it, for sure. Someone asked, is this a blush or a bronzer. And Treadmoon said, it looks like a cream that gives glow to your skin with a rosy hint of color. What? It looks like Silly Putty. It's like the color of Silly Putty. And it almost looks like old gum. It's, it doesn't have, it doesn't look deep enough to carry the weight of old gum. But it's almost like, could Hannah use that as a blush? You make me speechless. Ah ha ha. Odin's Eye released the Yorts. Is it pronounced like a Y? The the Yord Jord. Barba Papa. The Jord Jord Divine Collect. I I can't do the Trixie Mattel like in Sweden. In Swedish people, the Jord Divine Collection. Two eyeshadow palettes, thirty nine dollars fifty each. Okay, so there's the jewels and gem. 15 shades and delicate enchanting great pink. Oh, okay. Let me tell you this. I have not gotten it up for an eyeshadow palette in some time. Like not even, not, it's been, I haven't, it hasn't been one that made me like look twice at it. I don't want them, but like, I like both. I like it. I like it. I like gray tones. I like cool tones. I love like grayish colored, like anything that looks like, uh, Pittsburgh from when we were a steel town. So just ash, just like that's just like a, an ashy filter over top of all the colors. Love that. And actually, I don't know that I have a lot of stuff in my collection like this because I always think that I do. And then every time I get a palette or like interact with something or try to do something, I'm always like, maybe I don't have as much of that as I think I have. But I think but they're very beautiful. You know, Odin's Eye really knows how to put, ugh, knows how to put a color story, mm, put a color story together. It's your just celebrating their 10 year anniversary. The Dark Matter palette, inspired by their OG Dark Matter stack, their first four shade stack, now in a 12 shade palette. That is ugly. The cover of that, <laughs> the front of that palette is, that's ugly. Also, I don't know that, I don't know. I don't know. What is Mel doing? SOS. Please, someone help me. It's not healthy for me to feel. It's actually like a pretty color story, but also it's just like... I don't know. I don't really like Mel's formula, so I would, it couldn't be me. But also, and even if the colors aren't the same, but like every Melt palette looks the same for me. Like they all are like, it's like the same thing. They're always the same thing. In my brain, it's like, there's the melt palette and that's all of them look like that in my brain. And so does that one. It's just now in circles. What are these? Ooh, what are these? KVD Beauty is releasing the Dazzle Flakes Metallic Eye Pigment. Ooh, 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 those are pretty. These prismatic uh, shimmer of our viral Dazzle Sticks in a versatile wet, dry, loose pigment formula from multi-dimensional Italian. Okay. This might be a little too much for like the, the lay person, you know, I can get into that. 
I think a lot of us could get into that, us like makeup, like people who are like fluent in makeup and like love it. But as a, like, a consumer, I don't know that like many consumers who are just like strolling into a Sephora or an Ulta are gonna be like, that looks like something that I would wanna mess around with. Cause they look like a lot of work. Loose pigments are like a lot of work. Like they're, they're like really beautiful for the most part, but like, Anyway, I like it. I love when something Razzly Dazzly makes it to market. I love, I love this, I like love this kind of thing. I wish I wasn't right about people being kind of like afraid of this kind of thing. Like, like a, because I think this would be like a baby's first toe into like indie texture and stuff. I feel like it's it like really low, like lends itself to that. I wish... There was uh, like maybe twice the amount of shades, but I think for what KVD does, these are like good first shades for them for to do this. And I, I I hope they do well enough that they make more shades. As someone who owns many indie eyeshadows, the duochrome topper situations, I mean, this isn't gonna do much for me. Getting to interact with those things before you buy them, if that's the kind of important to you, go finding the testers of these is gonna be like a good way. You know what I mean? But like with a Cleona shade, you can't do that. So it's like, maybe this might be a better option for people who need to like, see it, interact with it before they buy it. I'm gonna end with this because it was released today. It's, it was announced today as I record this. Pat McGrath is releasing the Legendary Glow Color Balm. And I think those are sticks. They're $29 each. And they're releasing a Luxe Eyeshadow Quad in Passion Fleur. It looks really cheap. There's also a new skin fetish highlighter. Let me know if you feel otherwise, if you're someone who's had one of these. I love the highlighter stick. I don't need the balm. I don't need the balm. And I don't know how many of you want the balm. I would say make it just a highlighter stick and make it less expensive. And I think people would be more into it. But at how much are these? Yeah, at $58, I don't want the balm. So make it $35 and just the highlighter and I think more people would consider it. But it all looks cheap. The packaging looks cheap. It looks like a ColourPop release. The, uh, it's of course in pink packaging because of fucking course it is. I don't even need to look at the eyeshadow palette. It, it's not for me. I do, I think it's like a pretty eyeshadow palette. It looks like there's a lot of texture in there, whatever. I'm so over Pat McGrath. I'm so over it. I'm so over it. And not only that, it's just like whenever I look at these, blush shades it's like they're not even that nuanced the only one that i think is like the most nuanced is like forbidden fleur which is like a really beautiful and really deep i don't like balm blushes that's a personal thing that's like not just against pat mcgrath i i've tried balm blushes before i tried the nectar balms from ritual defeat and i don't really care for that formula and so in a stick formula i don't really care like i just don't care she's late to the game Every, every time now, she's not, Pat McGrath used to be a brand that would push makeup forward in a different direction and be doing something different. But now it's like they're, they're behind, they're chasing trends and they're not even really doing it in an interesting or elevated way. And so I have zero interest in this and I can't imagine, I, I don't know. I would hope that collectors of Pat McGrath would see this and be like, this is a little bit of a letdown. It's not, it's not giving luxury. It's not giving opulence. It's just giving something that looks like it's coming in a color bomb, plastic stick blush. <sighs> you know what, Pat McGrath? If you buy one of my mugs that says I would not like feedback on it, I'll stop talking about your brand. <laughs> but until that day, <sighs> That was like a really bad plug. That was really shameless of me. That's gonna wrap up this critical sass. I only went through trend mood. Listen, you know, as you may have seen in the past couple of videos, I've like been going through time, but today's video is really fun. I was actually had a lot of fun doing critical sass. I also filmed a video of this look that will come out in a few months because am I doing a deep dive in a new brand? <laughs> yes, I am. So none of this will, well, the lipstick was the Hourglass Red Zero lipstick so I can tell you about that because I didn't like my lipstick <laughs> from from the band I was testing but yeah we're on a new journey we're on a journey so subscribe if you enjoyed today's video we do critical sasses once a month we typically do them in a live form and they're always the last Wednesday of the month at 7 30 p.m eastern standard time so subscribe to come to that if that you're available at that time like the video so it gets into the eyes of more people and I'm on patreon.com if you like to support me there. But again, there's no pressure to, and then the merch is also optional, unless you're Pat McGrath and you would not like feedback on it, 
there's a mug for that. That message is for Pat McGrath and Pat McGrath only. It's not for all of you. It's just for Pat McGrath. Anyway, I appreciate you all so much for watching. Remember to follow your heart and you will find me.